Hi everyone, my name is Ibn and welcome to How Do You Do, a series in which I go through my thought process behind things that I've built for certain series and for this episode specifically building the Siamang Sanctuary for the latest Kuali Zoo episode. Um, if you haven't seen the previous episodes of the series, they will be linked in the description below. Um, this series is not really a tutorial series, it's more like I will show you how I look at these things and how I build the things that I do, but it's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Now, first off, when the new conservation pack was released, uh, I do a thing that I do with every single new DLC is I grab all the small pieces, as you can see right here, and um, I put them all on a small board so that I can easily see uh, what the shapes are. And then I will start messing around with those pieces. So I'll, I'll grab a single piece and I'll duplicate it. And I'll see what happens if I start rotating them a bit. So if I rotate them like this, oh, then I get a nice cool shape. And I'm like, okay, what happens if I then rotate the new combined shape? Oh, I get this cool shape. And that's essentially what I always do when I have a new pack or new pieces. I start by making this little mood board, grab some pieces, start um, messing around with them, putting them upside down, turning them around, turning them into specific patterns, and just see if something looks like something cool. Um, and that's, that's essentially the way um, I do my builds. There's not much magic behind it. It's simply looking at the pieces and seeing, like, trying to get nice shapes. And when I, once I have a certain shape, then I can start doing stuff with it. Um, let's take a look at some of the builds that I made in the uh, latest episode. First of all, um, this was something that, I'm, that I was quite proud of, the uh, Mexilente popcorn um, cart. So um, I've already used this cart technique in, in the past and I also explained it in the previous episodes. But with the new uh, Europe pack, we have this little LED piece, um, the LED end cap. And I could put that piece here uh, in the um, in the flag piece and it looks much more like the typical wheels that you see on a cart, especially if I sink it more <laughs> into the ground. It basically looks exactly like the wheels on a cart like that. Um, how I achieved the, um, the kind of curtain effect and that's also on the table or the curtains in the background of that building is simply using these uh, rod pieces or in this case the lead tube piece um, and I just stick them uh, together, push some of them back, push down some of them forward and that gives a kind of curtain um, feature. The cooking pot wasn't my design, that's a design made by um, Ricey. I simply used this new con uh, conservation lamp ceiling rose as a um, heat path where the cooking pot would be on top of, but Ricey was the one who created this little cooking pot out of simply two pieces, this uh, bracket piece and this full stop piece. And it is an insane, it's an insanely beautiful way of using two, like two pieces to create the effect that, um, that it gives and, and all credit goes to Ricey because she is absolutely insane with those kind of things. She, she can use like two to three pieces and create something amazing. Um, and I really like that. Um, On to the next piece. Uh, this was the little, as Mike called it, the Pokemon fruit, um, the Pokemon um, fr fruit juice dispenser. And um, again, I just grabbed a few simple, small pieces. I grabbed this uh, sign base as a kind of base for the fruit um, juice holder. I used two of these um, festive bulb lights. And what I usually do is I just, if you sync these into each other, you get this really weird thing. But if you sync it just right, and I think, I, I think I'll be better off 
just doing it by copying this one. And I'll just change the color to well, something light that looks like glass. And I think this actually looks better than the previous color. But if you see, if you like, if you see, you just raise this up a little bit, it gives the impression that there's, it's just like two halves um, of this uh, round shape being filled with something. And, and that just does it. It's this very simple technique. It doesn't really require much um, to, to give the right impression, but yeah, that's what it is. I also use these two, um, these two pieces to just make it look like it's actually something you can pour with. Like you have a hand hold over here, you have something to pour out and you have something to close the uh, juice holder if you want that, especially if you are transporting them, it might be good that you'll be able to close them. So continuing, continuing on, um, I've used Ricey's design even more um, by creating more cooking pots like this. Um, I also created these bells um, that would allow you to um, present some food um, and a table that uses the exact same technique as the other one. So basically you just use some art shapes. I used um, the round uh, cylinders and I used this uh, regular cylinder. And as you can see, if you just place them very carefully and, and give them a little bit of depth by moving them forward and backward a little bit, mm -hmm. you can easily create a kind of curtain um, blanket effect that uh, really, really looks convincing with not a lot of pieces. And that's also something that you want to keep in mind. So as I said, I also continued on with um, Ricey's cooking pot design. I simply made it larger. I added this little hook piece so it would look like I had a, a uh, ladle inside the cooking pot and then I just used a smaller full stop piece and um, what I did was quite simple you essentially just lower it in and start doing it like this and if you're careful it starts looking like the cook pot is actually filled with something Again, very small, simple technique, and it gives a very nice little result and brings so much life to uh, everything you've built. Next up, um, I made these new uh, lamps. I showed them in the episode as well, and it's basically what happened when I uh, started using this piece. So I grabbed this piece, and as I said earlier, what I then usually do is I start flipping them uh, along the axis and I quickly noticed this this shape um, and then I had this and I liked this a lot and then the next step was okay what if I turn it around like this and what if I have this and this what would it look like and it started looking like um, something where I could put um, this lamp in and then I was like, okay, cool. So I started making lamps like this with the smaller part, but I also wanted to um, make, but then I wanted to make it a bit larger. So I started using these art shapes to make a large shape like this. Um, I added some of these trim pieces to get the effect over here. And I added a small vent um, for aesthetics. There's probably a reason why you would have that in real life. I just thought it looked nice. Um, and then I used these conservation lamp bulbs to make the hanging effect. The annoying thing was that these light bulbs themselves were very long and they were sticking out of the um, sticking out of the uh, ceiling. And then Mike simply said, well, won't, why don't you just use like one of these cladding pieces and make a small border over here? That way you can sink them in more into the um, ceiling and it doesn't look as bad. And it looks fine and works well. So essentially that's a way you can make um, your own lamp uh, lamps, then it looks different from what you usually have in your zoo. And that's also a lot of fun. And next up is this leather piece. So this leather piece was used as a way to get into the Siamang enclosure. Um, and I wanted to make something that was quite realistic. So I started looking at some references and I saw some of these modern 
plasticky uh, looking um, ladders and they had these little hooks that you could put on a railing. So, okay, my first uh, reaction was cool, these little hooks, I can use the hook piece for um, the slatter and uh, the hook piece is one of my new favorite pieces. I simply combine it with this lad cap um, so that you could actually have a visual end of the pole of the ladder here. Um, and then it's not just like if you would remove this, it would just look like this. And that's a bit weird. That's not what it would look like in real life. So I simply put a lad cap piece on it and it works perfectly fine. Um, then for the steps, I've used this ceramic tile. Now, the reason for that is because it's um, one of the smaller pieces. It's uh, a half meter piece, which and, and super thin, and um, so that's super useful. But as you can see, I've used two pieces, and um, what you can also see is that there's no real visible seam. Um, if I would just do it like this, you would have a visible seam. Um, if you want to get rid of the Z fighting, you would still have one single seam. Um, so how do you fix this? Uh, you simply use um, the rotation, you turn off angle snap, and you start fiddling around with it a bit. You pull the piece forward, and if your rotation is done well, it starts disappearing. Uh, from a certain point, yeah, there it goes, and it's back. If you do it well, it doesn't real. It isn't really that noticeable. Like you can't really see that these pieces are slightly at an angle. Um, but once you know it, you know it, of course. Um, but that way you can start hiding seams, and that's how you can make really, really wrong pieces of this, or combine two pieces to make a single step. As I did at, at the top of the ladder, I also added these caps over here because those were those are present in real life as well. Right, on to another um, rather simple build, um, but you probably saw that I made rolls of toilet paper, and in this case, rolls of plastic bags. Um, and how I did that was simply, I took a full stop piece, I made it longer like this, um, and that way you have like a nice piece. Um, but of course, if these these plus these uh, rolls of plastic bags in real life, you would have a bit of a bit where you tear off a new piece, um, and you can achieve this by using the font pieces by simply aligning them like this. It looks like it's part of the um, it's part of the raw piece, and it starts looking exactly like what you want it to look like. Uh, to then finish it up, I simply added um, these lead caps again at the edge, uh, because at the ends of these um, uh, of these full stop pieces, because then it would look like it was a rolled up piece of plastic rather than just like oh here is a font piece. Um, so yeah. With the next piece, the projection screen, I did another thing. And again, it starts off just like all the other pieces. Um, it starts off with a single piece and I simply started rotating it. And I saw, okay, this looks cool. And then I was like, oh, and if I turn it like this, oh, I get this nice little cross, cross shape like here. And if you sink that underground, if I exit it, it looks like the stand of a projection screen. So then I just used the exact, the exact same technique as I did with the plastic bags, simply took a round roll piece, and this time around I used the um, Buccolo eye piece so that I could create the effect of, um, yeah, of this being a rolled up piece of uh, paper. The uh, hook piece was just the regular hook and the cable piece is the rod in the middle. Uh, the second to last piece that I wanted to highlight in this episode is the new uh, fire extinguisher. I'm super happy with it. It was um, one of the things that I've been trying to make myself for the longest time. Um, but every piece that we had was either too big or it wasn't round enough or it didn't look right. Um, but then we got this. We got these little gutter pieces that are essentially um, circles, and if you start stacking them up, 
you can create a nice little piece like this and then you can start changing the colors and you get something like this and that's when i started seeing a um that's when i started seeing a um fire extinguisher in this piece that i was making i simply then used these gutter down pipe pieces um, these bracket pieces to make something so that i could hold it against the wall and um, a lot of these fire extinguishers have this large um black piece at the bottom so i could use the new conservation garden light which is really cool because it's a, a, a small cylinder piece and super useful um, for this piece where there's usually some text i simply started using a uh, gutter piece and for the top i used this brass vinyl thin piece and a conservation wall tab and that's essentially all there is to it now for the final build, this was this was pretty much one of the last things that I've built for um, the episode. I made this grass or this lawn trimmer, and um, for starters, I needed this specific shape, so I just used the 3D font piece, the Boogaloo comma piece. Started doing what I always do, and I've said it like a million times already now, but I just turned it around, sunk it into each other. And for some reason, the pieces aren't aligned, but that's no problem. And I started seeing, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's the shape that I want for the base of the um, machine. And once I had that, I knew like, okay, this is the easy part. Now I need to do the saw blade. And um, I was inspired to do this um, saw piece, this grass trimmer, because of this piece, it kind of reminded me of um, the protection piece that uh, prevents you from touching the saw from this side of the um, machine. So I knew I was going to use this piece. Um, I knew that I would need a rod piece in between and I know that the cables are the smallest and the thinnest one so far. I, would, I knew that I was going to be able to use the tab pieces as the handheld. But, and that all really pretty much um, started flowing into itself quite easily. I could use these pieces as a kind of uh, decoration piece. Um, these um, switches for like the part over here and the pieces at the side. Um, but then, then the biggest issue was um, how would I do the saw? And the saw is made out of a bunch of pieces. There's a inner circle, there's a uh, lead cap piece, there's a plaster decal circle, and, and in the end, the saw blade is a 2D piece, a font piece. Um, so, you've seen all of the builds that I've done so far here, um, all of which I'm quite proud of and I'm really happy with. Um, and I think that's the best thing that I can give you now is just to. If you want to build stuff like this, like don't just go like, oh, even use this piece, so I'm going to use this as well. Just simply look at the piece um, and, and try to decipher what it, what shape it, it has. Like, um, I'll, I'll go back to the pieces at the beginning. Like, okay, I saw a pattern in here. I can see this piece and if I rotate it, I can I see, all right, I have a full circle and I can do stuff with this circle. Um, the same with the plant pot here. So the plant pot has this painted base um, and you can look at it as a painted base or you can look at it and see, okay, I have a circle piece and maybe if I uh, want to have a clock in one of my buildings, then maybe I could use this piece because of course these are all super large and these are nice for exterior clocks, but not for interior clocks. But like, if I look at it, this could be a clock piece. Uh, I could simply grab it. I can change the edge to black. I could grab maybe like one of the um, full stop pieces. Like life building right now. I can use this stop pieces 
to fill this part in. And if I would then put in like the numbers and uh, the um, everything that a clock has, I essentially made a clock. And that's just by looking at the pieces for the shape they are, rather than looking at the pieces for what they are. So that's the best step I can give you if you want to build the things that I've built in the latest Kuali episode or in um, other episodes of other series, is simply taking pieces, looking at the shape of that piece and just going, okay, that's what I can do with it. Um, like a clock is, is a circle, so this, this flower uh, this flower pot base is a circle, so this could be used for a clock. That's everything about my thought process that there is to talk about. Um, I'll hope to see you all in the next episode of this. I will try to do this more often um, and not just with Kuali episodes, but also with um, like Tarmashadi or future projects. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. If you ever have a build in one of the episodes of other series that you would really like to see um, explained in this How Do You Do series, simply let it know, let me know that in the comments and then I will take it in the next How Do You Do episode. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.